We need the E sprue, the G sprue, and the B sprue. B, B, E. We need a little bit of photo etch. Well, we'll worry about that later. Um, okay. B, E, G. Okay, we need two E43s. Now there's only one on each sprue. Good thing there's two sprues, right? Now we'll trim those out properly later. All right, now we need two E44s. Well, I may as well have grabbed them when I was right there. Okay, here they are. 44. Now I've got to bring the other sprue back. That was poor planning on my part. Okay, where, where was it now? There it is. 44. Okay, now we need two E64s. Okay, now as long as we're over here, looks like we need an E61 and an E60. Okay, here's 60, 61. And because we have to do the other side as well, Now I do believe that's it for the E sprue. Now the G sprue, I think we just need these two pieces here and these two pieces here. Do we need them off both sides? It says both sides. Um, uh, may as well, I guess. Okay, we need G31. Now we need a total of four of these G31s. And once again, there's only one on each sprue, but there are four sprues. I don't think I need to label these because they are distinctively different. Now for our life rafts, G33, we need four of them, two for each side. Now you'll notice there's G34 here, and it, it looks absolutely identical, but it's not. There's a slight difference. Well, actually, there's a big difference. I'll show you what it is. First of all, let's get one off here. Let's get a 33 off. Okay, now if I can turn it over. Okay, you see it? There's two little pegs on the bottom of 33, but these little pegs are not on this. 
On the other side of this, it's completely flat. Anyway, we need four of these. And I guess we'll have to get one off of one of the other sprues. Now, the, these ones here should have the pegs on the bottom. Yes, they do. Okay, now we need one more here. Yep, it's got the pegs on the bottom. Um, see if I can show you here. Okay, here's the bottom of the uh, 33, or of the 34 rather. Now, so far, all our parts that we've nipped off here are uh, designed so that they're like mirror image of each other in such a way that they can just be flipped over and they'll work on the opposite, opposite side. However, we're down to B20 and 25 right here. And they probably look like mirror image to each other. However, if they're flipped over, it could be that they are more detailed on the one side than the other. And, it, and then the, in other words, if this one was to be put over here and flipped over, yes, it would fit, but the detail might be on the bottom instead of the top, if you know what I mean. So, I'm going to put them in a couple of tins. Okay, here we go. B20. And B25. See, it says, this says 24. But this is obviously 20, 25, because this has to be 24 here. Uh, anyway. Okay, so this one is 25. And here we go again. Two pieces that are mirror image to each other. Unless they're flipped over, then they won't work. And we've got B2, B3. So I have made up a couple of little tins. And I put labels in them. And, see if I can pick that up, number three, and two. Now, according to the manual, we're supposed to have 22 pieces, 22 plastic pieces, that is. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. What we need to do now is get two pieces of photo etch A42. Late last night I got an email from John. Remember I showed you four pictures at the beginning of yesterday's episode of the Hood and the Bismarck, built by a guy who lives right here in Winnipeg? Anyway, he sent another email, and he told us what paint he used. It was this one. Yeah, I was curious. Now we know. Now John sent us about half a dozen more photos that he took during the build of his hood. And I've downloaded them. I'm saving them. We will look at them in the future when we get to that place in our build. Um, you know, for comparison. And uh, as I mentioned before, he used the uh, Pontos add-on kit. So it's not going to look quite the same, but it'll be interesting. Anyway, let's get back to trying to find our photo etch here. Okay, here we go. Photo etch sheet A. Must be a Canadian sheet, eh? Anyway, uh, these photo etch sheets, they've got plastic on both sides. And uh, this is the first time we're going to be using sheet A. We want A42. And here it is right here. Uh, but in order to be able to nip the parts off, I find it's easy to take easier to take one one of the sh one of the sides off here. Try not to damage any parts here. 
Okay, so I take this one off very carefully, making sure it's not hooking onto anything. All right. Now, the other side is still on. So that sort of helps to reinforce things that are really, really delicate, like, say, these, for instance, while you're trying to nip them off. Anyway, we'll stick the macro lens on, and we'll see if we can get these little number 42s here. Now, actually, maybe before we do that, because I'm I moved in so close with the macro lens, you can't see what I'm doing, what I've got here. And people keep asking me, what what is that special cutter you're using to to uh, cut off the photo edge pieces with? You know, they see this unusual little sharp blade here, and they think that this is something that I bought, but it's not. It's just an ordinary blade like this, and I just took an uh, with the grinder, I just removed this part, and then I'm just sharpening this one tiny little piece. Uh, end of it over and over again and it, it, it works really really well it's quite easy to sharpen because it's so small not a whole lot of uh, width there that you have to sharpen anyway Okay, that helps to drop our ISO down just a little bit here. We're down to 2000. I'll see if I can maybe adjust my light just a little better here. Well, that's better. We're down to 1250. I like to have the ISO as low as possible. And everything's still lined up. Trying to get as close to the edge of the part as I can. I think I did pretty good. Now, as I've mentioned in earlier episodes, I'm probably going to get my my hand in your way here, and you're not going to be able to see me nipping this part off, but there we go. I may as well do this one as long as I'm at the same angle here. I was looking at the manual earlier and it's kind of difficult to tell what am I supposed to make these things look like. I'll show you in a minute. Now it should come off of there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. And that's the way I do it. Now, as long as we have the macro lens on, this is the time to take a look at our manual close up. Right now, you're seeing it much better than you, can, you regularly can, even with strong reading glasses. Um, but you can see here how I'm supposed to bend it at, at these three indentations so that it looks like this. Then it's supposed to go over top of this torpedo shaped part and fasten onto the wings. And uh, maybe what we should do uh, is stop poking at it and go and find uh, a photograph of the real thing if we can 
Sometimes when you can see a photograph and you know how it's supposed to go, all of a sudden it sort of makes sense. So let's do that. Okay, I can't find any photographs. It appears that the Bismarck was photographed a lot better than the Hood was. Now maybe the Germans were more into photography than the English, I have no idea. There's got to be photos out there somewhere of what we're looking for, but but maybe there's not. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we, if we take our book from John Roberts here and flip it open to page 108, I've already looked it up. Let me make room here. Okay, here is a drawing of that thing. Uh, I'll move in on it a little bit better. Oh, by the way, it is a G11. Okay, G11. It's called a paravane. Okay, that sort of makes sense. Uh, it's, it's sort of a winged thing for going through the water. Anyway, I'll, I'll zoom in on this. Now, without going to a lot of detail here and ending up completely confusing everybody, because I sometimes don't describe things too well, picture this thing sort of laying on its side so that the wing part was sort of instead of being horizontal, it would be vertical in the water. And there would be a cable attached to this thing. And, and the idea is that when the thing would be strung out the sides of the ship, and being towed behind the ship but out to the side, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, I'm just sort of guessing it'd probably be at about a 45 degree angle, the cable to the, to the stern of the ship. Um, stuck out the sides and I don't know how far out they went but the the cable that was attached to this between this and the ship would catch onto the cable of a mine that was being supported from the seabed okay the 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 cable then would feed would feed the the mine cable into this cutter here and it's kind of hard to see but the what would happen is the cable of the mine would get caught in this sort of a a, a knife thing that progressively closes and it would cut the cable um, and then the mine would come to the surface and I guess they would see it and they would uh, do something with it anyway that's what this is all about and you can sort of see how this this piece of photo etch that we have to put on how it's supposed to fasten down now uh, our, our our photo etch does not have the detail going on here. It's possible that the uh, Pontos kits do, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to deal with what we've got, and now there's something else I want to show you. Okay, remember yesterday we were looking at these things here? We were wondering what these tubes were, and I said I thought they were had something to do with, uh, to absorb impact from a torpedo or something, but um, yeah, the reason I knew that they had something to do with that is because when I first got this book a few months ago, I saw this, and I was curious too, what, what are those things? Well, if we go over here, there it says 19. It's not very clear, but it is. It says 19, and 19, it is crushing tubes. So, yeah, it's to absorb impact from something. Um, kind of like the bumpers on the on new cars that have all that plastic honeycomb and here in Winnipeg in the winter time when it's freezing cold and there's an accident. Well, we have a bunch of shattered plastic all over the intersection. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Now, I don't think that something like this is going to bend well in Andy's photo etch bender. Um, I'll be able to bend it one way, but then I don't know how I can grab hold of it to bend it the other. So I think I'm going to use my uh, Tamiya photo etch pliers here for this. And uh, I'll slip the macro lens on and we'll see if we can't uh, just uh, video it being done. Okay, I'm sure that my mechanism for locking my pliers put a smile on your face. Anyway, what I'm going to try to do is, first of all, fold it in half. Uh, 
I'm wondering if I should maybe use something a little different here. Um, I don't know if this is going to be better or worse. Got to get my angle so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Okay, now if I take it out of there and uh, see, or maybe just, yeah, if I take it out of there and then fold it in half. Okay, just, just a moment, I gotta take my locking mechanism off here. All right, I think I got it now. Now, if this goes out of your field of view, or pings off into oblivion, Okay, can you see that? I think I got it. Now, if I could hold it on the end like this, and then stick my hobby knife in there and spread it out. And I'm trying to hold this so that you can see what I'm doing. I wish I could see this and my monitor at the same time. There we go. Whoops. Something like this. There. Now I do believe that's supposed to be how it's supposed to go. It might be opened up a little bit too much or a little bit not enough. Either way, let's see if I can stand it up here. Okay, either way, it should uh, fit on that part after we get it glued together. I don't even have those little pieces uh, cleaned up yet. I just looked up into my monitor and I'm afraid maybe I did a whole bunch of this and you couldn't see what I was doing. Sorry about that if I did. Now I basically did the other one the same way. Okay, I, I realize that I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse here and this is the first time I've tried this. I'm pretty sure this is the way it's supposed to go. No, that, that was a fantastic guess. It, it's almost a perfect fit. Now, if I was to take a little bit of CA and, uh, you know, put some right there, put some right there, uh, that would wick into place. Now, of course, that would not be a good idea because this piece here, these pegs here are supposed to go into those holes first. But of course we got to get our our, uh, our flashing, our sprue, taken off of the parts. And trying to hold on to those little pieces with my fingers, well, it doesn't always go so good. Anyway, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to go. Now I got so involved with getting parts off the sprue today that I forgot all about this liquid mask until just right now. Maybe I should be using something else here. Now, normally I would have painted this little part, so it's not really a good test here. But I want to see if it, if it comes off. Now you're supposed to be able to pull it off there. I don't know if I'd want to be doing this on on something that was on a painted surface because I would be scratching it. No, uh, maybe 
Maybe I'll use a piece of wood here. Now mind you, this piece of wood would also scratch a painted surface. One of the viewers told me that uh, Vajeo has a uh, had a movie on, and so what I did was I I highlighted what he had written and put selected search by Google, and up came a video. chance to watch it all yet. But in, anyway, that's what we got here. Still a little bit sticky. Well, my modeling friends, once again, the time has gotten away on me and I've got to cut this video off. So much I had planned on telling you today and that's going to have to wait until tomorrow's episode. Anyway, thanks for watching and all being well, we will see you tomorrow. <laughs>